There's a lot of life along this river. This is really a magical place for me. Uh, I just love to be here all the time. Uh, I'm Caleb Helsel. I live in Austin, Texas. I've been a birder for six or seven years. Bird watching has been a long time hobby of mine. One summer, I saw these people with big cameras, but they weren't looking at birds, they were looking at dragonflies. So that made me curious what kind of species are around here that these people are seeing that are so interesting. And that just got me down the path of curiosity. There's an abundance of water here. Kind of along a river the whole way with several ponds that attract a bunch of wildlife. Dragonflies like to lay their eggs in bodies of water. As those eggs develop, they'll grow into nymphs, which are also hunters like the adult dragonflies. And they live the first part of their lives underwater, hunting other aquatic insects. And then when they're ready, they'll climb out of the water and turn into a dragonfly, which will fly around and hunt things like mosquitoes, gnats, and even other dragonflies, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is a male great blue skimmer right here. Wow. I think I've seen over 100 species of dragonflies. Every time I see a new one, it's just, just a little bit of enjoyment for me. Let's see if I can catch it. Got him. Let's have a look. So be gentle. You gotta make sure you hold them so that you don't harm them. They sure are pretty. This guy's a Rambar's forktail. I'm gonna let him go. Whee! It's just nice to get intimate, close views of a dragonfly actually in your hand. When I started dragonflies, I, I could, couldn't recognize any species at all that I was seeing. But over time, I eventually kind of got familiar with the species in my area and was able to recognize all the species that I'm looking at. This guy is a blue dasher. I use iNaturalist. It's an app and a website for people to post sightings of anything they see in nature. And experts will give opinions about what species you're seeing. But eventually that knowledge actually builds up and you will become an expert on the species that you're seeing. And eventually you'll just be able to see it in the field and know what you're seeing. It's always fun to discover uncommon ones that aren't regular for an area. I am John Abbott, Chief Curator and Director of Research and Collections for the University of Alabama Museums. My name is Kendra Abbott, and I'm an ecologist. What really gets me excited, what really wakes me up in the morning is like discovery. It's like being in the 1800s with Darwin, you know, traveling around the world and figuring out where species are, uh, where they aren't, although Darwin didn't have a lot of the tools that we have today. Oh, yeah, look at the river. Yeah, it looks nice. You can see, uh, or Pedogomphus utani here for sure. So there are 250 species of uh, dragonflies and damselflies, or odonates, known in Texas, and some of them are rarer than others. And so what we're trying to do is better document some of those uh, more rare or rarely seen species as a way to figure out if they need conservation help. If a dragonfly is around in the water, it's shedding DNA. And so we use this machine called an Andy to filter the DNA out of the water, and we'll be able to pick that up, even little particles of DNA, we'll be able to pick that up. Where we'll pull up about a liter of water, we will collect the DNA on a filter paper in here. Then we will go back to the lab using the set of what are called primers, select for dragonflies and the specific ones we're looking for, amplify them and compare that DNA to, to these known libraries uh, of DNA out there to determine what's here. We could spend like 10 weeks looking for this species, trying to find the nymphs in the water, but in just 30 minutes, we could sample the water in the soil and then say, hey, you know what? Or Pedagomphus is here. So I'm just gonna grab a soil sample because we might find the DNA in the soil if we miss it in the, the water. It's much more efficient 
in terms of just the amount of time it takes to potentially get an idea of what dragonfly species are here. It can detect potentially really rare species, and we're not having to kill anything. We're actually just literally filtering the DNA out of the water. I really love using tools like environmental DNA to be able to really figure out what's happening with these rare species. What is their range? Where, where are they? Are, you know, can we find them this year and then maybe we don't find them in five years? And then we know, hey, we really need to focus on con conserving this species. Something's changed in this habitat that doesn't allow it to persist anymore. Dragonflies are oftentimes the one that really gets people hopping and excited. It pulls people over from studying birds and from, from studying butterflies. Just because it's such a new group that hasn't received so much attention in the past, there's a real opportunity for enthusiasts who contribute uh, real science. Oh, male roseate skimmer on this uh, twig. You can just keep going to a place and the more times you go there, the more chances you'll have at finding a larger variety of different species. This here is an American ruby spot. It's a kind of damselfly, and you can usually tell the difference between dragonflies and damselflies by the way they hold their wings when they're perched. So damselflies like this will usually hold their wings uh, close together and straight up over their backs, while dragonflies will usually have their wings spread out so you can see all four of them. Before, I was just looking for birds, but now I have a whole another species to look for. I don't know if I could get burned out. I mean, if I see all the dragonfly species, I can start looking at the butterfly species and the plant species. There's always more to learn.